Mariana and Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters. I'm sure that everyone at Toastmasters, certainly because you come to this organization, have experienced anxiety before you have to get up in front of people and speak. And obviously that's why I think all of us are here, to get over that anxiety and over the fear of speaking. But as we are human beings by nature, we make mistakes, but also there is a saying, something like, life happens, or as they say, shit happens. <laughs> um, so when I think about my career over the last few years, I've done a significant amount of speaking, um, and uh, Toastmasters has been a big part of that. And I kept thinking to myself, well, you know, how could I actually turn some of those silly things that happened to me into something positive? And I thought, well, it doesn't always have to be positive, it doesn't always have to be a lesson, perhaps it can just be a story for the sake of entertainment. So, the first lesson that I want to share with you is that less is more. Um, about five years ago, I was invited to speak at a um, 50th uh, anniversary of a particular school in Johannesburg and um, it was called St. Martin's. It's a very posh, fancy private school and it's sort of hidden away in the southern suburbs uh, called Rosettenville. If, if you know what Rosettenville is like, it's, it's, it's really amazing that this particular school is still there because it's sort of like an infestation, if you can imagine that, of people from all sorts of places there are the street walkers, uh, I don't know if I can call them day walkers. There, there are women that are walking on the street at night. <laughs> um, the, the ladies of the night, as they're called. There are all sorts of taverns, um, and there are all sorts of shenanigans, and there's, there's a lot of crime. And then in the center of this particular uh, area, there's this, this beautiful school that has this sort of pristine uh, uh, environment that's very clean. So. I rocked up and um, I, had, I had my speech in my head, what, what I was going to share with them. And I delivered the speech and everything went very, very well. And I thought, wow, I've got them on my side. I can go, you know, I can go longer and I can tell another story and another story and another story. And I started, as I started doing this, Something was sort of talking to me and saying to me, like, I think now it's time to actually stop. Because <laughs> these people were getting fidgety, people were moving around, they were uncomfortable. And, and I, I, was in, in, I was so uh, excited and I was talking and I was sharing and, you know, I, I got laughs and people reacted and responded. But I <coughs> didn't read the audience. I just got carried away with the story and I, I forced them um, to listen to this last story about Yusuf and I told them this funny story of something that happened with Yusuf um, that uh, somebody that they didn't know and for me it was so funny and I always think about um, why did I actually try and add the story into the speech that I was making because what I said was enough and the, the frustration from the audience was sort of palpable by the time that I was done, because after the speech, when normally as a speaker you're used to people coming up to you and talking to you and saying to you it was a good speech, they really enjoyed it, everybody seemed to run away. <laughs> so I learned a very big lesson with that uh, particular experience that sometimes less is more. And the lesson for me is, you know, always know when to shut up. Like, when you're making speeches, I think you shouldn't always try to, 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 to tell the whole story. Or you shouldn't have to, you know, you shouldn't uh, try to include too much information. Because if you make a shorter speech, you can actually allow people to sort of think about it and enjoy the little bit that you've shared. Um, on a, a different occasion, I was invited to, um, on a particular week, I had several bookings in small towns and I, I, I traveled. With a friend of mine, um, I didn't uh, um, feel like doing the driving work. We were going to places like Morimori, 
places like um, we, we end up in Durban and Bethel, um, and all sorts of small places outside of Johannesburg. And then we just sort of had this detour to, to Durban to try and fit in uh, um, a visit that, that we needed to do there as well. And, you know, the first day was great. And we were, we really had a good time in Monday morning. And the second day was great. And the third day, by the third day, we were trying to fit in so much, and we'd been eating so much and drinking so much, I started feeling like I've got diarrhea. And I was throwing up. And I was sick. And I, I didn't know what was going on. I, I didn't feel like myself. And I had made this commitment to fit in this particular school. I, I needed to make a speech. They already paid me for the speech. And the person that was with me, my friend Ruel, Ruel Leach, he, you know, he can speak. He used to be a pastor. He used to be a minister at some point. He did missionary work. So I thought, maybe he can do the speech. So we get to the venue, and I'm still throwing up, and I'm, I, I just, I can't see myself doing this. So I ask him, can you please do this speech? I really, I can't, this isn't, you know, I'm not going to get to, come back to this particular place. If, if any of you know, you've got, um, if you're traveling from the coast, you've got Durban, then Peter Maritzburg, then you've got uh, Hilton. So this particular school was in Hilton. It's sort of like in a very in-between place, and it's not easy to get there. So I thought, Let, let's do the speech and get it over with. Drool understands what it was about. So I thought, okay, he'll handle it. So he handles it. He goes, he does the speech, he comes back. I'm starting to feel a little bit better. I'm still very woozy and very sick. I think it was two days later, I get a call from the people who invited me. And they tell, and this is where I learned like my second lesson, always do your own speeches. <laughs> they tell me that my friend, when he was speaking, firstly, his buttons, he had some buttons that were, were crossed. His tie was drawn to the one side. His belt buckle, I think, was sort of half open and and he kept going backwards and forwards and sort of rocking and they pointed out maybe 10 different mistakes that he made just in terms of his how he presented himself and that was a particularly bad reflection on me and I, I had to listen to this and I had to apologize and I was completely embarrassed but thinking about what happened was, I think maybe it would have been better if I promised less and I delivered more. So maybe I should have promised them, or I should have spoken to them and said, look, some, uh, let's postpone this, I'm sick, let's do it the next day, or let's do it some other time. But it, it, it certainly was a big lesson in trusting other people to do your speeches for you when you're being paid to, do, to, to deliver a speech. And as I sort of um, try and, and, and bring this to a conclusion. I want to share with you a, a little story of what happened to me um, on this final speech, which um, in fact also took place in Durban. But I'll tell you, I first need to tell you what happened before. A week before, I had to go to Durban. Um, I was in the movies, watching something like an action movie, and I had my snacks with me, and I had popcorn, and I had built on. And I remember chewing the bottom, and at some point I had crack, and it wasn't the bottom. It was one of my front tooth that actually cracked. And I remember going to the dentist, and the dentist did whatever they did, and they sort of made a temporary uh, fixture on the, on, the, on the tooth. And um, I thought, okay, this is fine. I think, um, you know, I can handle this, I can, I, can, I can deal with it. So, I get to Durban, it's a breakfast seminar that I have to present. And there's all these uh, business people that have been invited to listen to me. The organizer of the, of the breakfast seminar is the one who invited me and, and booked me. And we had approximately 30 or 40 people in the audience that was listening to me. And the first thing now, as they say as well, um, uh, uh, it, whatever can go wrong, um, how does the saying go? <laughs> if, if something can go wrong, it will go wrong. There's, there's a saying like that, um, I don't exactly remember how it goes. 
So the first thing that happens is just before the presentation, that, that was when the power outages were still very frequently, the power dies. So firstly the room goes dark. So every, they, they get up and they open the, um, the blinds and I think to myself, well I can actually continue because well I've got battery power on my projector and I can sort of talk them through, like uh, on my laptop, I can talk them through the particular topic that I wanted to address with them. So I start talking. So I was a bit ruffled by the electricity and everybody was, everything was chaotic. What I did not expect was that my tooth would actually break again. And this was so awkward, this was so weird, this was so uncomfortable because I had to learn another very big lesson which is never swallow your own teeth. <laughs> I delivered this speech, um, the full presentation for approximately 40 minutes um, while keeping the tooth in my mouth. So I, I, I really could not be very expressive. And I had all sorts of funny body postures because when everything is fine, you, you can be quite expressive and, and, and as a speaker. If you, and I, had, I did have some good experience because I've been a Toastmaster since 2006 or 7. But nothing in Toastmasters has actually prepared me for that. I finished the presentation, I finished uh, talking to the audience, and now we had to move on to the breakfast. And I, being sort of treated as a guest of honor, had to sit and speak to every person there. I did not have a moment to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and at the same time, I was so embarrassed because the moment I felt like I was going to open my mouth, they would see that I had a gap in my front tooth that wasn't there an hour ago. <laughs> so, the last uh, uh, thing that I'd like you to remember is always make sure that you visit the dentist at least twice a year. <laughs> Madam Toastmaster, ladies and gentlemen.